Hey, what is up everybody? It's your boy Nerdicane coming at you with another video. Uh, it is the week that uh, Miss Marvel gets released in theaters. No, 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 not, not that Miss Marvel. Here, let me switch the picture. Yeah, this one right here, the, the Brie Larson uh, Zero Excitement version. So it's Monday and nobody's seen this movie. None of the critics have seen this movie. Um, that's a bad sign, and I'll get to that later, but this movie has changed the way uh, movies are promoted on online at places like Rotten Tomatoes and other places, as you'll see. Um, the, voodoo, the movie was so unanticipated. The, 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 the anticipation rating was so low. I think the lowest it got was 29% of the audience were actually surprised or actually excited to see the movie. Um, that's a big problem when you're a shill site like Rotten Tomatoes or Fandango. Uh, that's a big problem. So it changed the way that they do business. Uh, they basically took away the I don't want to see this button. That's, that's the, their, that was their brilliant remedy for, uh, for fixing that problem of 29%. Now they get 100% of people who press that button want to see the movie. And, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what a shill site would do. And here's part of the problem. This is somebody did the research on this. This is the, one of the managers who's in charge of, of the movies at Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, her name is Gria Drake. Uh, don't call her up. Don't harass her. Don't bug her online. Um, as you can see, this is, yeah, she's, she's in on the fix. And, the fix is truly in, and I'll show you exactly why. This is why. Disney dollars. Here's a picture of Disney dollars. Now, these are actually, um, they're actually kind of a cool thing. I don't know if you can still get them. You used to be able to get them at, uh, at the parks, at the Disney parks, and you could spend them just like real money. They were cute. Kids liked them, um, and collectors like to get them every year because they issued them every year. I don't know if they still do it or not. It was a, it was a fun idea. But this is why. This is the advertising dollars. This is... A shill site like like Rotten Tomatoes, what they've become, they're so interested. They want that. It's it's like magazines, gaming magazines. There we had there was a bit of a controversy a few years ago from what I from uh, what I heard with gaming journalists, and you need to understand that the gaming journalists and gaming magazines and uh, a lot of sites, they're not there for you. That's not their intent. There's a few. Um, the Quartering has a site that is just devoted to games and the gamer and the community. But all these other ones that get kind of big, um, what they want is they want the advertising dollars that comes along with having the mouse happy with you. So you see that the fix is in. Like, um, oh, here, I'll show you this. Uh, this is a graphic that somebody put together uh, showing The Last Jedi. Audiences, the people who actually paid money to go see the movies, hated it. The people who were getting paid money to write about the movies, they loved it because, and it is a, a compromise of their ethics as journalists. Uh, they're taking the money, they're taking the advertising dollars, they're getting the exclusive look, they're getting the exclusive sneak peek, they get to go to the, the, the little Hollywood parties and the things that are, that the media events that they do for them, um, the only thing they have to do is sell their opinion online. And as you see with the disparity of 91% of critics love the movie and then 44% of the people who are actually paying money to see the movie hated it. When you have a disparity like that, you instantly need to look right back at uh, the people who, it's as they say in, in uh, investigations, follow the money. Who's getting paid, who's paying. And that's where you'll see the, where the problem is. Now, I'd have to say the most interesting thing in the lead up to this movie coming out is to see, is to watch the two main actors in the movie do everything they can to sabotage the audience. It's almost as if, you know, it's almost as if they're in a fight to see who can get less people to come watch the movie, whether, you know, Brie Larson's antics uh, blaming everything on the patriarchy and, and wanting less white men on her on t to talk to white men on her uh, press tour 
or Samuel L. Jackson going out and saying that Trump, Trump has, is a plantation owner. You think that they would have learned this lesson from uh, Solo from last year. When you add things, when you add politics and you, add, you start adding things that aren't part of getting the, the audience interested in watching it, such as, uh, I forget who was came out at the last minute and said, oh, uh, Lando's pansexual. Have fun explaining that to your kids at this, at this movie, parents. Yeah, have fun with it. And it's, it's things like that that kind of sabotage the audience that have really been odd watching. So the other thing, I'm going to get back to Disney money. And this is the thing that's um, very much the same way. It parallels gaming. Is I've, I've called myself you know, the old man of gaming as I've been around gaming for uh, decades. Um, but there's no reviews of this. Now, this isn't unusual. There's a lot of... A lot of times a studio will put a gag order on reviews. But as we've seen with, with the sites going out of their way to make sure that there's no negative perception of this, Disney's already bought the either actively or passively. They've already bought the good reviews. This is going to be sort of like a year ago when Black Panther came out and people were almost af- – it was like people were afraid – to give any negativity about the, to give a negative review about it. I mean, the thing that Disney had on their side with that one is it was actually a good movie. It was actually, the, it, there was nothing ancillary to the production of the movie or, or the, the build up to its release that was damaging in any way. Just at, like, like Captain Marvel, like Brie Larson and Samuel L. going out and saying these really crazy things. So you'll see this with games. Uh, as I parallel it because if a game comes out and it's not good, it's not ready, the game producers will put a full gag order on the reviews. No one will get to play it as a demo. You, it won't get released as a demo early. Nobody will touch it until the day it comes out because they don't want negative press to hurt that day one sales. And I think that's what we have here with with Captain Marvel is nobody, Disney doesn't want any advanced screening, any, any advanced uh, press or reviews of it to come out because they don't want to hurt that day one, uh, the day one take, which if you ask me has already been hurt enough. Um, but that's my take on it. Uh, I think they're projecting 140 million. I think it's going to be, I'll be surprised if it breaks 110. Uh, I really wouldn't be surprised if it's under ninety million for the first weekend, uh, as much as they tried to sabotage their own movie. But so I don't know if I'm going to go see Captain Marvel this first week. Um, I still haven't seen Alita Battle Battle Angel. I I have a toddler. I don't get to go to movies as much as I used to. Uh, but I I may take an afternoon and and slip out and see it. But here, this is my dirty little secret. This is kind of what I'm gonna I might do. Um, if I go see Captain Marvel first week. I'm not going to see it the first weekend. I don't have time for that. But uh, I'm going to find a theater that is showing Alita Battle Angel and Captain Marvel at the same time, at roughly the same time. I will buy a ticket to Alita, and I will go into the theater to uh, to watch Captain Marvel. Um, slightly unscrupulous, yeah, but I would rather give... I would rather show support for Alita than, uh, than for Captain Marvel because they've just everything that Brie... I mean, personally, the things that Brie Larson has said has, have really turned me off. She's not promoting the movie the way other Marvel actors have. There, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing thankful uh, about it. She's got this nice, this podium, this Marvel movie. She's, she's the first female to have her own Marvel movie. And instead of having just a tiny little bit of, of thankfulness for it, uh, she's gone on and, and she's going with her, her politics and her, her crusade against men. So that's kind of what's turned me off of the movie. But that's all I got for this one. You guys go out and buy a ticket to Alita Battle Angel and then just go walk in and watch Captain Marvel if you must. Uh, when you get bored with that, you can go back to watch Alita Battle Angel. It's a much better movie. But uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for, for watching. You guys have a good day. Bye.